So, this is February. It's your love reading. Happy Valentine's Day. I'm going to look at couples, singles, and then undefined relationships. So maybe it's on again, off again. Maybe it's not Facebook official. Maybe you're in a uh, polyamorous relationship. Maybe you are, um, you know, in a secret relationship with somebody who's married to somebody else, whatever. Um, I'm going to start with singles, then do couples, then do the undefined. And the reason why I do the undefined last is because sometimes it's good to watch both the couples and the singles because aspects of that might go <gasps> and trigger for you. Um, so if you wanted to do it that way or if you just want to skip right to that, I'm going to put a link in the description box below that says where each reading starts. So let's get started with singles. Okay, single Virgos. Your recent past is saying like, okay, hey, you finally took care of yourself. You put yourself first. You did some self-care. Time out for yourself. Bought yourself something cute. Whatever it was, you really started to honor you. And that's really important as far as trying to attract a relationship because what we're doing is we are showing other people, um, based on the way that we treat ourselves, how to treat us, right? We're teaching them that. So now you're in this really solid, good place in order to attract the relationships that you want. However, here's the issue. Moving throughout the month of February and into March, there are going to be um, kind of bad guys out there. And when I say bad guys, I mean also girls. <laughs> um, because tarot is not gender specific. What I'm saying is there are people out there who are deceptive and lying to you. So how are we going to notice who they are so that we can just avoid them. Um, generally, they're going to come across as someone who is very, very successful, but here's gonna be the clue, is that they don't seem to have moved on from something or someone in their past. However, they're gonna say like, oh, I'm super um, excited to meet you, and they're gonna be the type who says, oh, I'm really in love with you right away. You know, like, oh, I love you, even though I just met you last week. Um, this is the type of person who's not going to be very quick at responding to messages that are electronic via email, via text message, stuff like that. Phone calls might be a little bit different, but um, written word, okay, so this is a clue. And um, again, like I said, they're going to kind of um, smother you with this like, oh, I'm so happy I met you. You're everything I ever wanted. Could you be more perfect? I'm totally in love with you. That person's a fucking liar. It's a disaster. It's a shit show. Avoid them at all costs, okay? But for other people that you might be meeting this month, what's up? And they say, here's the thing. Y um, you might not be tremendously excited to try to meet anyone this month, or conversely, you might be meeting people this month or um, getting ideas about where you could do that, places you could go, like meetups, hangouts, whatever. Um, maybe you're like, oh, well, I really want to be with somebody who likes to read because I like to read, so I'm going to hang out at the bookstore and keep my one eye open for hotties, right? But they're like that enthusiasm or excitement might not be there for you. Or you might be meeting people who seem really great, but you know what? You're just not physically very attracted to them. However, here's the thing, is they say that the more that you converse with them, the more especially, so it's like text messaging or emailing or um, you know, maybe messaging in general through a dating app or who knows what is very important this month for Virgos because this is how things are going to shift and change and move. So some of you might be like, oh, I really am into this conversation, but this is doesn't look like the kind of person I want. Maybe, um, you know, so let's say that you're on a dating app or website, okay? And you look at somebody's profile and you start to talk to, and, and you're like, mm, I don't like guys who uh, have beards, okay? I don't want to be with somebody who has a beard. Nah, not really into him. Mm, you know what? He's a... Uh, um, he works in construction for a living, and I don't want somebody who has dirty clothes at the end of the day coming to my home, you know, or whatever your judgment is there, or um, whatever that is. What they're saying is, though, that you might be discounting people a little too quickly because 
through conversation, you might find that like this is actually a really awesome match for you. And so it's not saying lower your standards. Definitely don't do that. You know what you like and what you don't like. However, um, what it is saying is really evaluate what's the most important thing for you in a relationship. Is it that somebody doesn't have a beard or is it that you can keep a conversation going and flowing? Because you know what? Here's the thing. When you are um, in your 20s, right, it's all about like, oh, that guy's hot and not much else matters. And this is why people go from, you know, their 20s and then in their early 30s have their first divorce. <laughs> because all of a sudden you're like out to dinner on your date night with your husband or your wife, whatever, and you're just like looking at each other like this. Like, once you're done talking about your children, what else do you have in common at this point? And so it's like, okay, you're still handsome, but, um, and maybe, maybe you are, maybe you're not tired of having sex with them, but you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm going to have to be 70 years old and just sit in silence next to you. There's nothing to talk about anymore. There's no common interests. Like, holy fucking shit, this is going to be torture. And so... That's why they're saying maybe put your focus more on where is the banter good? Who can you communicate with most? And then kind of see if that can grow into something. Now, that won't work in every single case, right? But in some specific cases, it might. And so just keep your mind open. They're saying um, the thing is, is that the right relationship for you isn't necessarily the most attractive, um, like, most lusty response that your body has to a human being. Oftentimes, actually, what happens is when we are like very attracted to someone straight out the gate, when we're like, oh my gosh, like objectively, you might not even be that handsome, but like, oh my gosh, I just feel this like thing for you. Like, I just want to like lick your face and like, oh, why are your skin is a jacket? Like, you're just like, Wah! and your body goes crazy. Those kind of relationships are often soul contracts and not in a good way. <laughs> I mean, they are in a good way because everything that happens to you is good, even if it doesn't feel good. But those are the relationships that end um, kind of in flames, and they end up that way to teach you something, okay? This is like, you know, the universe or God's way of ensuring that you come together, that you feel that way. Like, oh, I've known you forever, and like, you're the hottest thing I've ever seen, and um, I literally want to eat your dick. Like, it's that, okay? So those kind of relationships, like I said, they you feel that attraction initially because you're supposed to learn something very difficult, um, but for your soul's growth. And so those are not the kind of people that for like a long-term happy, healthy, non-toxic relationship that endures the you know, the the span of your lifetime, those are not the kind of people you want to be with in the first place. So I wouldn't fret if initially your reaction is not like, oh my gosh, I so want to have sex with you. Wait and see how maybe potential relationships can grow. They can start as friendships, and then if they stay as friendships, awesome. If they, de if they develop into something else later, awesome. Because as you start to love this person more and more, you will become more attracted to them. Does that make sense? So um, what else for Virgos in February? Okay. So they're saying um, some of you, are, it's like finally February, I am completely moving on from baggage from the past, from people from the past. I am going like, okay, here's my pain. I acknowledge it. And I'm just letting that shit go. And you're um, kind of looking at your past and your past relationships without the rose colored glasses anymore. You're like, no, no, no. Okay. Here's the reality of what it was, which is good because some of you had that as a block and um, that was preventing you from having this new love come through. So um, for the majority of Virgos, will you find love in the month of February? And they're saying the majority of you will find it a year from now. Not all of you. I could better tell you in a personal reading. But, you know, this video is for anywhere from like 100 viewers to 8,000 viewers. So what they're saying here is those of you who have not yet gotten to this place of that total he healing saying, you know what, whatever happened with so-and-so, like that was painful, even if it was way back. Um, and... 
but now I'm seeing it as it is and that's okay because I learned something from it and I'm moving on. Like clearing that old stagnant energy, those of you who do that a year from now should be at least, if you're not in the relationship, right about to meet that person. For the rest of you that don't do that though, nah, hard to say, okay? So hopefully you can take that as motivation. Um, what is your action word that will kind of help you uh, in order to find love? And they're saying it's the small things, looking in the small, smaller things, the tiny details of things, and what is less obvious is very, very important in order to uh, try to find your love match this month. And this is exactly what the message was saying before, right? Where it's like, it's not about how they look or what they do for a job. Like, it's in the little things. It's how they speak to you. It's what they say to you. It's your common interest. It's things that maybe... I mean, we know that they're important, but it might not be the first thing that we notice. And so maybe kind of doing a more thorough sweep is um, important. And, uh, you know, these energies are still the same thing, even if you're not online dating. Even if you're just, like, meeting people organically, like, um, at a coffee shop or being introduced to people through mutual friends. No matter what, the energy is still the same, where it's about... Um, the subtlety in things, the things that you don't typically notice, okay? Now, looking at couples for February. Virgo, couples, your recent past is like, um, things are light, things are easy emotionally, things aren't that deep right now either. Um, coming into February and then kind of moving towards March, it looks like some certain thing, certain things are ending. So for some Virgos, it would be like, okay, based on not really having these feelings for my partner, based on my apathy, things aren't that deep anymore, this relationship is just going to end. Um, and then for others of you, it's more like that energy is going to end, and now we're going to step into a new cycle in our relationship. So for those of you who are kind of like, I feel nothing for my partner, <laughs> I want to look at you first. Um, what they're saying is that, yeah, divorce is imminent, uh, but unfortunately the way that that happens is somewhat out of your control. They say always try to speak lovingly, um, not necessarily saying like, hey, I love you if you don't anymore to your partner, but at least to communicate things in a very loving way to family when you have to explain it or um, in kind of dealing with those proceedings. They're saying, you know, nobody's going to be super happy about this. Uh, however, this is like the divine guidance and how to handle it. They're saying at the end of the day, there's going to be like a lot of bickering and arguing, even if you both agree that you should get a divorce. And there are going to be things that aren't said that should be said. And there's going to be a lot of cr uh, confusion here. Okay, so what they're saying is that um, you know, there's confusion in many ways. Things are not communicated effectively. Emails are not sent. Documents don't go where they're supposed to go. Um, maybe you and your partner just st stop talking to each other. Now, the important thing is that, so for the purposes of you coming out of this as unscathed as possible, reputation-wise, financially, if it's like a divorce with that those kind of stakes, or even if it's a breakup with those kind of stakes, um, you know, friendship, reputation-wise, all of these things, you know, maybe your ability to be friends down the road, may maybe in regards to child custody, those kind of things, you're going to need to make sure that all of your communication is positive and loving. Um, they're saying now, this is in the best interest for you in the very, very, very long term. Like when you get to the age of death and retirement, kind of long term. It is imperative that you are speaking in very loving terms. Now you might say, okay, well, this is just like a relationship that wasn't that serious. We didn't live together. We don't have kids together. So like maybe that's not the case. Maybe I can just be like, yeah, well, fuck you and move on. Mm -mm. Because like I said, there are different aspects here that are um, in play. So perhaps there might be a perfect match out there for you. And um, that perfect match might be the brother of this ex's best friend or soon-to-be best friend. And if you made this breakup a total shit show, if you were cruel, if you were mean, if you were dramatic, that will be passed along to that person 
when the two of you connect and you know what happens then, it doesn't make for an awesome beginning of a relationship where you're like more open and trusting. It creates this um, relationship that is built upon like suspicion and wondering like, are you really who you seem to be? Like, or are you kind of like a devious, conniving bitch? And so those are things we don't want to do. Now, even if you're not a devious, conniving bitch, that might be the impression that somebody else has based on hearsay, okay? Or even, you know, maybe this breakup goes badly that you have, and then somehow they're connected to somebody who has the ability to hire or fire you lately, and you could miss out on a very good job opportunity, okay? So... Or um, maybe they would leave like a bad review on your business page and it completely ruins, you know, the future potential trajectory of something good. And so that's why I'm bringing this up and why it's very important. Now, for the rest of you who are just, um, you're not, it's just like things are calm in your relationship and you do still love your partner. Um, what's going on with that as you enter this new cycle? What's that new cycle about? And they're saying the new cycle is all about love and romance and just this like very sexy energy. Um, good for you. Awesome. They're saying like this is about togetherness. It's about connectedness. It's about like really loving and honoring the other person, putting them on these pedestals and just like, ugh. I am really jealous for coupled Virgos that, um, that are entering this new phase because this is going to be an awesome phase. Um, they're saying this is about complete honesty and truth and communication, especially communication in the bedroom that correlates then to greater and deeper sexual fulfillment as well as emotional fulfillment. Like, holy shit. This is amazing. Um, they're saying, yeah, this is like trying new things. This is like finding that passion again. This is excitement and enthusiasm and new adventures with your partner. Fuck yes. I don't even have anything else to say for couples. <laughs> Just leave it there. Awesome. Good for you. Well, okay. So let me say, see, how do you, um, how do you really step into this energy? Let's make sure so that nobody misses it. Um, and they're saying like letting any resistance fall away. The power of the human spirit is not restricted. Okay. So it's like, um, <laughs> this is such a Virgo thing. Okay. So, um, maybe your partner is like, Hey, I want to um, get you this, like, really sexy dress. Will you wear it for me? And, okay, I know all about this because, you know what, my rising sign is Virgo. And I had a partner who was like that, who um, I was kind of like a trophy wife, okay? Uh, so he'd be like, ooh, I really like it when you wear this thing. Like, will you wear this thing? And I was like, mm-mm, there's certain rules. Like, if you went to try to buy me a dress, I'd be like, if it's strapless or if it shows any cleavage, it's got to be below the knee. Like, I'm not going to show, like, my ass and my tits at the same time. It's one or the other. Keep it classy, San Francisco, right? So, anyway, with this kind of energy, like, uh, your partner might be sending you sexy texts. Like, hey, come home on your lunch break and blah, 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 or whatever. And you're kind of like, oh, stop, I'm a lady. Or, oh, I wouldn't wear that. But you can work out a compromise in which you can meet their needs or um, make things exciting for them in a different way. So, for example, you know, when your partner maybe runs out to the grocery store, when they come back, you could be wearing, you know, something super skanky, if that was something that they were asking you for. Or if you're like, oh, no, like, I can't come home from work or whatever, uh, make sure that you plan a day that you could do that. Take a day off where you can just have, like, a sexy day. Or send, like, you know, from the bathroom stall, a really sexy nude, like whatever. But the, so they're saying like, that's the only thing that would maybe inhibit this really amazing, super um, loving and like sexy vibe between you and your partner in February. So, hey, okay, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. So maybe a lot of November babies for Virgo mamas. <laughs> hmm. um, okay, and then for those of you in undefined relationships, let's see. So they're saying, now you're standing here wondering, are the challenges that we're facing here 
even worth it or not? Like, is there going to be a return on my investment? Yes or no? So they're saying possibly, but it's going to be slow or it's coming to you slower than you want. And unfortunately, the issue here with that is that um, you don't have a lot of you don't have a lot of fear necessarily, but a big part of the reason why you don't have fear in this area is, um, I wouldn't say like it's blind optimism in an unhealthy way. It's just like you don't have a past experience that is similar enough to this to give you like a clear idea of what's going down. And so for you, what they're saying is, um, of all of the Virgos, maybe this specific a Virgo in this specific situation hasn't entirely mastered that energy of self-care and self-love and honoring yourself and all that stuff. You might be trying to put this other person first, accommodating their needs or their schedule in order to try to make this relationship grow or head in the direction you want. And so they're saying, the weird thing is, though, is you're also kind of getting a lot of this similar energy to what the coupled Virgos had, where it's a lot of romance this month. It's a lot of nurturing emotionally as well. It's a lot of love. It's a lot of sex. It's a lot of yay. So um, those things are good. Now, looking at the different aspects of like the recent past and what's coming, they're saying that you know, historically, maybe this relationship was built on excitement, fun, attraction, um, you know, and whether that is for the actual person or just the situation was there and you're a little bit fearless. And now you feel like you're coupled and like intuitively, you kind of know that's probably where you're going to end up. And they're saying like, even though it's not maybe going as quick as you want, and even though you're not necessarily excited about that, you're not wrong. Like your intuition is right. Like things are actually moving and shifting. Um, in the way that you want them to, but it's starting to feel hopeless and you're starting to kind of feel like, okay, well, I'm like desirable. Like, what am I doing here waiting? Like, there are other people who would like want to be with me right away. Okay, but the fact is you want to be with this person. You already have this emotional connection and this like deep bond and it's only going to get better. And so just wait it out, you know? They're saying like the waiting is painful and um, it hurts, but what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? And so what they're saying with this kind of energy is that, um, you know, I mean, ultimately living on earth is going to be pain. We That's how we learn. We learn through our pain. We learn from our suffering. And if we didn't have anything to learn, we wouldn't incarnate on earth in the first place. It's just part of being human, unfortunately, okay? And so they're saying, so you can hurt because you're impatient or because things aren't going exactly to the way that you would have designed them. Or you can abandon this entirely and hurt because you miss this person that you're deeply connected to that you fucking love that gives you like all these feelings of, you know, like importance and stuff like that. So like, you know, pick your poison, essentially. So they're saying here that your action message, um, your action step is the messenger from the past to the future, you've got to be mindful. you got to think about the present only. The present is a gift, right? So we're going to think, how do I feel right now? Because if you're thinking about the past, you're going to get depressed. If you're thinking about the future, you're going to get anxiety. So as long as you're feeling good in the moment, just embrace that. Just love that. Just enjoy it and give gratitude for it. And that is the best thing for your relationship as well as kind of hoping, um, you know, kind of manipulating things per the law of attraction in your energy field to get them moving in the direction you want in the first place. Okay? So that's February. I love you. Bye. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!